Hello everyone, thanks for checking out the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to get the Angular CLI to work with the Flask web server backend. Um, I'm going to use PyCharm for this today um, and this is just going to be a quick tutorial um, to solve the issue of having, uh, or preventing I should say, having two servers running at the same time. Um, the Angular CLI comes with a server in itself which serves the JavaScript files. Um, which I'm sure you can tie into the Flask web server as well, but I just didn't see the point in having two web servers running at the same time. Um, so I'm going to do a sort of all-in-one solution for that, where the Angular files built out from the Angular CLI will be actually served from a Flask Python web server. So I'm going to create a new project, and I'm just going to do a pure Python one, just to make it uh, simpler for people to follow along. So I'll call this one Angular Flask. Um, just a note in here, I have a virtual env um, selected, so this is going to pick up my local Python 2 interpreter. <coughs> just going to let this build. So once this is built, you'll see that we now have a Angular Flask folder and it's just empty other than this uh, virtual environment. If I open the terminal down here, you can see I'm actually in the virtual environment at the minute. So first things first, we can do a pip install of Flask. This will download the dependencies for our Flask web server. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so after this, we're going to create a few directories. So Flask expects there to be a templates directory as well as a static directory and they're both in the same um, root folder. So after this I'm going to create a new Angular CLI project. So I'm going to do that by doing ng new and then I'll call this one Angular Flask also. So that's our project fully built now. As you can see, if we open the Angular Flask folder, this is what Angular CLI has built out for us. There's all sorts of files in here, um, but we're interested in the files that are actually in the source folder and within app. Okay. So I'm just going to cd into the Angular folder that I just created. This puts us in the actual Angular uh, project route. So after this, I'm going to create a new Angular component with ng-generate uh, component, and I'm going to call it uh, person. So from the console output, we can see that that's built. You'll notice then if we refresh the source folder and we go into app, we should have a person folder in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to this app module TS um, file. And I'm going to import the uh, Angular forms module. So if I type forms, it should get that come up. Then what we need to do is we need to add it to this import list. So then that should auto-complete. See that. That allows us to use the um, ng model in our form later on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to person. And I'm going to go into the person component of TS. And I'm just going to create a property in here called name. And it's going to be equal to meantime see that next thing to do is to go into this person.component.html and this is what's going to show in our html so for example i'll do a h1 and i'll say welcome to flask angular app as a header then i'm going to print out uh, actually i'm going to put an input in here 
input, then we're going to do open square brackets, curly brackets, ng model, and we're going to close those off, equals, and then we're going to put the name of our property that we added to person, which is name, and then I'm going to do a type equals text, and close that off, and then just to prove it down here, I will have a p class, and I'll just use these double curly braces and I'll also put name in here just to see uh, or just to show you that the two way data binding is working fully. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now let's see, I think that's everything we've got at the moment. I think that's everything plugged in. Now what we need to do is we need to go to this main app.component.html and this is just what this is the default that the um, Angular CLI spits out for us. So I'm just going to <coughs> clear all that out. Now if we open ties again, we will have a custom um, directive called app person, which is from the uh, from the person component that we made earlier. So that should be everything there set up on the angular side. Now I'm going to set up the flask web server so I can close these folders down. If we go in here and I create a new python file I'll call this app.py and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring up the flask quick start here. As you can see they give you a, a minimal um, bit of code that just lets you Get a flask server up and running for this case i'm also going to add in render template from um, the flask import and also what i'm going to do is i'm going to return render template and then index.html and then because we're running in a dev environment at the minute just for testing i'll do an app.run and this will run the web server So the next thing to do, just check I'm in the right folder. So now that we've got all our development code where we want it to be, we want to run this ng build, and we want to give it a base href of static. ng build base href static and we hit enter there. So what this is going to do, it's going to take all our AngularJS uh, or TypeScript files, I should say, from the Angular CLI um, directory, especially the source folder in here, and it's going to compile them into a main.js, a runtime.js, styles, vendor, um, which we can then put into our static folder. So that should be compiled into a folder called dist. I'll just synchronize this folder. This is our distribution folder. As you can see it has the same um, it has the same title as our um, root folder. And inside we have an index.html and then we have these five um, JavaScript files and they have like a map file associated with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy each of the JS files, including the map files, and I'm going to put those inside the static folder. Let them copy. And then I'm going to do the same with index.html. Copy that. Put it into templates and paste. Is this done? So now that we've built all our JS files and index.html using the Angular CLI, we can go ahead and start our Python web server and we can follow it to uh, the local host. And as you can see, we now have um, our title of our directive and you can see that the two way data binding is working. So that means that we've successfully been able to have our 
JavaScript files that are built from the Angular CLI served from a Python web app and we haven't needed to um, start up a separate HTML or HTTP web server just to serve the, um, the front end. So at the moment what we have to do is we have to manually copy over the files every time we run the ng build command but in the next video I'm going to show you how to write a simple Python script that will automatically search for changes and copy those files into their appropriate directories, the static and templates directories. Um, and that means we can have a, um, an automated development environment um, that's much, much nicer to use. So see you in the next video.